This is a lesson on fraction and decimal benchmarks. So uh, before we get into it, let's look at the bottom. I put a benchmark um, definition. So remember that a benchmark is another word for reference point. Benchmarks are often mul multiples of 5 or 10, numbers ending in 5 or 0. So that's what they often are. Now fractions is a little bit different, but we can still put on the number line um, benchmarks. So first what you're going to do is you need to um, complete the following number lines. Wherever there's a tick and no uh, fraction underneath, you need to figure out which fraction should go there and write it down. So please pause the video and play again once you have filled in all of these marks. Okay, so I've done um, some of the number lines completely, and one of them I left, just to show in case you're not sure um, how I got there. So the first one is completely done, and uh, the denominator is always going to be 2 on that number line. The next one, the second number line, um, you'll notice that you should have 4 as your denominator, for each of the fractions. So it should be 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, and then the fourth fourths would be right here. Uh, 1 whole, 0 fourths would be right here. You could put it like that. But it's not really necessary. Um, next, the third number line should have denominators always of 5. So you'll notice that it it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then this could be 5 out of 5 or 1 whole. Either way, uh, we just write 1 as 1 whole because that's the conventional way. Um, and then we just put everything out of 5. Now I know it needs to be 5 because there's 5 equal parts. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 equal parts. So that means that deno the denominator is going to be 5. Now on the bottom, if I wanted to fill this out, um, it's already been given to you that it is 10. We could count though, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces in between. So that means that I can look at the 0 and then ne the next one will be 1, then 2, there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 would be right here, but we don't need to write it. And then we just put everything out of 10. And that is the easy way to do a fraction number line, is to just count up. Um, and then the numerator, the last one, will always be one smaller than the denominator. Because technically, uh, the denominator, the 10, would be right here. That 1 would be 10 out of 10. But again, we don't write it. So that's how we know how many. Next, um, we're going to do a little bit of practice. So what I want you to do is um, figure out which fraction in, in each pair is greater and how do you know. So let's do the first one together first. Um, we are going to need to change the, uh, de the denominators so that they are equal. They're both one thing or the other. And I know that 4 can't go into 100, but I know that uh, 4, I mean, 4 can't go into 10, but it can go into 100. So I will make an equivalent fraction. And the easiest way to think about 3 quarters is in money, because I know there are 4 quarters in a dollar, and 3 quarters equals 75 cents. Okay, and then if I want to turn this into an equivalent fraction as well, I can add a zero to the end of each of those numbers to make it 100. Technically, I'm timesing both by 10, but this is the easy way. Okay, and then I can just compare. Is uh, 70 out of 100 larger or 75 out of 100? Well, 75 out of 100 is larger, so I will circle this one. You complete uh, the other three, making sure that you change um, the denominator, and also follow the numerator with it before deciding which one's larger. <laughs> All right, 
So um, this one you should have got uh, four tenths uh, over here is the equivalent fraction. So five tenths is bigger. Um, I've got one half and six tenths. So I can turn this one half into five tenths because two times five is ten. And uh, so that means one times five is five. And five is smaller than six. So six over ten wins six tenths. And uh, lastly here, um, we're going to have to do something similar over here as over here. So um, this one quarter, it needs to be turned into an equivalent fraction. I'll put it below because I'm running out of space. Now think money again. One quarter is worth 25 cents. Four quarters is worth 100 cents. And then I'm going to uh, multiply both the top and bottom of this one by 10. So now we've got 20 out of 100 or 25 out of 100. Well, 25 out of 100 or 25 hundredths is the biggest. Next one, what you need to do is um, suppose the number lines were labeled with decimals rather than fractions. Which decimal would replace each of these numbers? Now remember we did this um, in the last, last lesson. So zero as a decimal would be zero decimal zero. Nine out of ten, well we can always change a fraction into a decimal if our numerator, I mean our denominator, is either 10 or 100, and this is 10. So all I need to do is write 0 decimal and then the numerator because the numerator digits matches the number of zeros on the bottom. Now this one, we can't just do straight um, decimals, so we have to do an equivalent fraction. So I will make this out of 10, and I have to think 5 times what equals 10. Well, 5 times 2 equals 10. That means 3 times 2 equals 6. So that means my um, decimal would be 0 decimal 6. Okay, you tried these three, so pause the video and then play again once you have finished. Okay, so 1 half. You might already know this uh, decimal, but if not, we can change it into a fraction. So we can put the denominator as 10. 2 times 5 is 10, so 1 times 5 is 5. So my decimal would be 0 decimal 5. Remember, that's because it's like this. That's an equivalent decimal. And uh, 50 is half of 100. That's how I know that 0 decimal, or 0 0.5 is uh, a half. Okay, 1 as a decimal, you should have got 1 decimal 0 to show that there's no decimals after there, no numbers. And the last one, we're thinking in quarters again, so we can convert this to 25 hundredths. And so my decimal would be 0 decimal to 5. Okay, so I could put that up on the number line. Um, now, which one would I find out to be the biggest or the smallest number? Well. I would need to make sure that everything has um, the same number of digits after the zero to really tell. Okay, so I will create equivalent decimals. And to create an equivalent decimal, all I need to do is I can add as many zeros to the right of a number, or to the right of a decimal, without changing its value. So this is an equivalent decimal, and I want two digits after the decimal because the largest one or the one with the most digits, I guess, is decimal 25, 0 0.25. So that's two digits, so turn everything into two digits. So this gets an extra zero. This only has one. It needs another zero. This one needs a zero. This one needs a zero. And now we're good. So firstly, we, we start um, at the number to the left. The number that is furthest to the left is always the biggest in uh, both decimals and whole numbers. Okay, so we're looking at this right here first. And they're all zeros except this one. So one decimal, we'll just keep those two zeros after, is the largest. Okay. Then the next largest, we need to look at 
the tenths place. Not the tens, but the tenths. Okay, so uh, I've got a zero, I've got a nine, six, five, zero, and two. So which of those is the largest number? Well, nine is. So I would go zero decimal, zero, nine, zero. Okay, so I'll cross that off to make sure that I know what I've just done. Then I've got six, five, and two left. So that, oh, I did that wrong. You're probably thinking, Miss Bashford, you did that wrong. There we go. I'll fix it. There, that's right. Okay, as I was saying, uh, 0 0.60 0 would be the next biggest. And if it helps, think of it like this. 90, 60, 50, 100, 25. That'll make it really easy for you to think about. That's not what those numbers mean. But if you just relate it to those, you'll be able to really write these numbers in order. And then the smallest one would be 0 decimal 0, 0, because that's nothing. Okay, so if we flip down to the bottom here, um, I've got a little blurb, and it says equivalent fractions. Um, you can put zeros to the right of the digits in the decimal. So I have two examples. 0 0.9 can be 0 0.90. That means the same thing, and so does 0 0.2 or 0 0.20. Those mean the same. We've already gone through this. So let's go to the back of the page now. And let's do this connect. So it says, you can use benchmarks to compare and order decimals. We can rename the benchmarks 0, half, and 1 as decimals. So this is our original number line of benchmarks for fractions. We would use 0, half, and a whole. Sometimes we put more in there depending on what we are plotting. But that's the standard. So the standard for decimals would be 0 decimal 0 or 0 0.0, 0 0.5, and 1.0. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to do an example together. Um, and it asks which decimal is greater, 0 0.25 or 0 0.7. So we only have um, one digit here. Oh. There we go. Uh, one digit there, and we have two digits here. So what we need to do to this one is do an equivalent decimal to make it easier to understand. So really, we've got 0 decimal 25 and 0 decimal 70. This makes it easier because you might look at this as 25 and 7. So you might think that 25 is bigger than 7. But really, this is more like saying 70 if you're relating. Okay, so because this has 2 tenths and this has 7 tenths. So 7 tenths is larger. So that means that my alligator wants to eat the 0 decimal 7 because it is larger. Okay, so... Um, equivalent decimals are a little simpler than equivalent fractions. Just make sure there's the same number of digits after the decimal. Okay, so what you need to do is practice. So um, please order 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 0 0.32 from least to greatest, so smallest to biggest. And I gave you a hint to use equivalent decimals. Please pause the video and play again once you've finished. Okay, so hopefully what you did first was rewrite these with the same number of digits after the decimal as the one with the largest, or the, not the largest, but the largest number of digits in it. Okay, so this one's trying to trick you again because at first glance it appears that this would be 7, 9, and 32. So it looks like 32 would be the biggest, but it's not 32, it's 0 decimal 32. And 0 decimal 32, 3 tenths, is smaller than 9 tenths and smaller than 7 tenths. So if I wanted to write the smallest first, I would write 0 decimal 32. And then, which one's the second smallest? Think of it as 90 or 70, or 9, ten 9 tenths or 7 tenths. Well, 7 tenths is smaller. 
and 0 decimal 9 would be the largest one. And since this is not the original decimal, I'll take that out there. Okay, so it's quite straightforward. There's a little bit more difficult questions in your textbook than this, but not too bad. Um, your assignment then is on page 181 to 182, oh, and it's numbers 1 to 7, not 72.